Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, July 11th, 2012, and I'm Darko. You can check out my website, it's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. If you'd like to donate, you can go to ggnonline.com and do that, also to follow by email. So, first article I have up for the War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty is ex-U.S. Commander McChrystal calls for reviving the draft. So, the former U.S. commander in Afghanistan, Stanley McChrystal, has urged the draft to be reinstated to spread the burden of fighting and to instill a sense of shared civic duty among young Americans. Sounds kind of like Israel, huh? You can be rest assured that is no coincidence that right now, at this particular time in Israel, I've covered, I just covered this in the past week, they're, um, they're expanding their conscri conscription of services. I mean, we all know that, it's, what is it, both men and women have to serve in the military over there, uh, but now they're expanding it to, uh, what was it, ultra-Orthodox Jews and Arabs? So they're trying to beef up their forces, and as everything is going uh, to smaller scale, uh, i.e. special forces and stuff like that, he's calling for uh, a draft, right, to bulk up uh, the forces, even though there's supposedly no money to support that. So something's going on behind the scenes here that they're getting ready for, and I'm going to cover a lot of that in this video, this first video. It says here, the country's all-volunteer force has performed a great skill, but after more than a decade, we're running very, very hard at a certain point. You can't expect it to go forever, he said in a conference last month. Apart from the strain on troops and their families after repeated deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, only a small fraction of the population was affected by conflicts, the general said. That was part of um, Donald Rumsfeld modern-type war warfare, so that was actually designed. It's less than 1% of Americans touched by this, he said, in the event organized by Aspen Institute. So yeah, he was uh, calling for a national service after high school or college, and it says here that I don't, this is what he said, I don't think young people would really fight this, they're talking about the draft, if it was fair, if everybody did it. I'm not talking about military, I'm talking about all kinds of things. It's not whether they go build roads and parks or that sort of thing, it's what you put inside them because once you've contributed to something, you have a slightly different view of it. So it's a very collectivist statement. We have Russian warships on maneuvers and will resupply in Syria. A dozen Russian warships from three fleets are participating in a joint three-month exercise. It goes on and it says that the, they're going to be visiting the Syrian port city of Tardis where the Russian base is located. It says the drills are not related to the Syrian conflict. Okay. The inter-fleet group under a single command will perform a number of scheduled combat preparedness tasks while following their route in the ocean zone, the ministry statement says. And this is basically the same thing Russian warships exercise in the Atlantic and Mediterranean. And some more Russian news. We have Russia hopes to prolong military base presence in Tajikistan. So, so the Russian military base in the country was opened in 2004 and is the largest Russian base for ground forces abroad with up to 7,000 military servicemen stationed there. And it expires, well basically their presence in the country expires in 2014. So I found this kind of interesting. Under the current uh, agreements, Russia does not pay J Tajikistan for its military base, but renders the country's uh, military and technical assistance. So in other words, we got your back. Kyrgyzstan to raise rental fees for Russian military bases. And the reason they're probably able to do this, basically um, uh, negotiate this, is because, well, the West likes Kyrgyzstan. They basically, they have their eye on them, and they're kind of not backing them, but just like other countries, you know, like Israel with Azerbaijan and that. And I tried looking for this article, but it doesn't come up. But either way, this title, The West Plans to Partition Kyrgyzstan are nearing completion. That was in 2010, just to give you a, just a quick background. But currently, they host four Russian military bases. Next up, we have PG Arab states seek to topple Syria government to weaken Iran. I've mentioned this many times before, that's basically what it's all about, take down Syria to get to Iran. So a senior Russian official says the Sunni Persian Gulf littoral states seek to topple the government of Syria and President Assad in order to weaken Iran. These Gulf countries would like to see the Sunnis take power and establish a religious state just like in uh, the Persian Gulf and weaken the Shiites who have been ruling Syria as well as Iran which is currently regarded as Syria's ally. So. Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bar and Bahrain treat Iran with much animosity and see a toppled Assad as a way to weaken the Shia Iran. Then we have Vladimir Putin saying timely forecast of international events are needed. 
says, this is, I'll just go through an editor's note because it was kind of good. A shifting volatile world makes leaders feel uneasy. This is why the U.S. government is fixed on Twitter, using it like a windsock. We sh he says we should influence more actively the situation where Russia's interests are directly involved, looking ahead and acting accordingly, being ready for any, even the most unfavorable turn of events, he said. Uh, he says here it was a meeting with Russian foreign ambassadors in Moscow on Monday. Now Kofi Annan is enlisting Iran to solve the Syrian crisis. It says details of the plan are still unclear, but international envoy agrees with Assad on a framework involving Tehran, Iran, and staunching bloodshed. So basically the rebel terrorist fighters dismissed any role for Iran in a plan they, and some experts say, have little hope for succeeding. So it's no surprise that the people that are funding these rebel terrorists, the opposition to the United States, has rejected Iranian participation as well in the international meetings. Then next up we have Jordan. Jordan opens new refugee camp for Syrians. Remember the 14,000 uh, ex troop exercise? They had 14,000 troops exercising in Jordan right on the border and now they have this refugee camp pop up and the authorities as they say have been reluctant to set up the refugee camps possibly to avoid angering Syrian president um, by showing images at his doorstep of civilians f uh, fleeing his military oh god this is god, such loaded I can't even read this it's just loaded bullshit his military onslaught against them right so and then but this has come from the UN the UN refugee agency appealed to the kingdom to make more room so so yeah, it says uh, here they've reported, the aid workers reported a sudden surge of 3,600 refugees last week and it increased the pressure on Jordan. They, and this is mostly due to the Syrian government having, go, having to go town to town uh, getting rid of the terrorists that are basically holding towns and cities in Syria captive. I mean, they're kidnapping children now and holding them for ransom. They're killing people if, if they're, uh, they don't even have to be pro-Assad just if they're not with the free Syrian army or the rebel terrorists, whatever they call themselves, the peaceful activists, then then they intimidate them, they threaten them, threaten them, they kill them and murder them. So they're leaving. And as they're leaving, they're straining relations with other countries. And this is probably part of the plan, right? Kind of like with Libya, uh, with all the people going into uh, Europe. It says here that Jordan suffers acute water shortages and has complained that the refugees were exhausting its limited resources. And we have this from July 4, 2012, Syrian refugees in Turkey long to rejoin the fight. It says here, uh, right along the border where Turkey is providing an, for an estimated 24,000 Syrian guests, including free Syrian army members waiting for their wounds to heal so they can return to battle the forces of President al-Assad. So this is pretty interesting right here. Because you have this uh, restaurant owner, I guess apparently he's a refugee as well, and he says here that they came to my restaurant and asked me uh, which side I was on, and he said, they're talking about government forces, and I told them I wasn't on either side, so they shot me because I refused to support Assad. So, so it's going on on both sides, and he said this, if the Americans wanted to get rid of Assad, they can do it in two days. He said, why did they intervene in Libya and not in Syria? We just want the U.S. to give us weapons. What happened in Libya, Iraq, and Afghanistan, we want them to do that in Syria. Well, they already have. He didn't get that memo. It says here, Cyprus prepares for up to 200,000 Syrian refugees, emergency plan for influx of up to almost a quarter million refugees. It says the number is equivalent to a quarter of the population of the Republic of Cyprus, a huge burden at a time of economic upheaval. And if you remember what um, Tarpley was saying, Webster Tarpley, uh, about Syria, he was saying that the goal is to basically take a, take down all of the countries around them. This is when he was referring to Turkey, saying that they would use Turkey as a as their little puppet and um, as surrounding countries, and then they would fall afterwards. And speaking of Cyprus, Cyprus energy skirmish, Israel is prepared to increase its military presence in the eastern Mediterranean. From an editor's note again, remember when Israel recently denied plans for bringing their military into Cyprus region? It says, it seems their first response pattern is to castigate or severely punish whoever leaked the info, then deny and later do it anyway, thinking no one pays attention. And it basically goes in there and says that uh, this is creating tension with Lebanon and Turkey and that they have all these types of warships and stuff like that uh, around in that area to start extracting natural gas in that in 2013. 
Next up, Turkey reportedly skirting sanctions by paying for Iranian oil and gold. They denied claims it was using alternative payment methods to bypass SWIFT, along with Tavula, I think that's how it's pronounced, warned by U.S. for breaking Iran's sanctions. The small South Pacific island nation has been told by the U.S. to stop reflagging Iranian oil tankers and warned its government of the risk of breaking U.S. sanctions. Then remember this, Kenya cancels Iran oil deal after warning from the United States. They're canceling a deal to import Iranian oil hours after the U.S. directly warned or threatened the country that it was a risk being penalized. And Iran's supreme leader says what? West vaccinated Iran against sanctions. He dismissed harsher sanctions imposed on Iran this month over its disputed nuclear activities, saying the country was 100 times stronger than before. Says here, these days, Westerners are being sensational about sanctions, but they don't understand that they themselves vaccinated Iran through the sanctions imposed over the last 30 years. The Iran's uh, Islamic Revolution a little over three decades ago toppled the U.S. back Shah. And oilprice.com saying EU's Iran sanctions are intended to appease Israel ahead of the elections so that they don't basically get all trigger happy and do a unilateral strike. And that's what they're actually talking about in Israel right now. So it's here why oil prices are about to collapse. Oh, yeah, and the thing is, is if they go ahead and they strike Iran, they're worried that Iranians are going to actually uh, band together because not all of them are with their government. And um, a strike on Iran from Israel would actually unite them. And that's why they're holding back from a unilateral strike. And if you remember this article, hopefully you do, from January of this year, why oil prices are about to collapse, uh, we move down here and it talks about Iran. Uh, the oil prices may have, quote, surged today, but uh, in just in the recent, uh, what, couple weeks, they've generally been lower. It says here, while there would be undoubtedly a short-term price rise, which there was, cheered on by the usual suspects, in the medium and long term, the embargo will act to reduce oil prices. This is because Iran will necessarily have to sell oil at below market price to China and others, and since the market is already oversupplied, particularly in Europe, this will undercut market prices generally. Syria's fighting spilled into Lebanon, and five have been killed. And it even goes in there, and it actually admits, it says here, rebels fighting to unseat Assad have used the north, uh, used north Lebanon as a base. Then we have Israeli soldiers cross into Lebanon's border area. Israeli so soldiers have once again crossed into Lebanon in clear violation of the country's sovereignty and UN Security Council resolution. According to reports, an Israeli foot patrol crossed the UN-drawn blue line and entered Lebanese soil on Wednesday and stayed in the area for hours. The violation of Lebanon's airspace, territorial waters, and border by Israel, Israeli military occurs on almost a daily basis. Hezbollah uncovers spy cell working for U.S. and Israel. The Lebanese resistant movement Hezbollah has uncovered a three-member spy network uh, working with U.S. and Israeli intelligence services during the past month. And do you remember this article? Israeli general says populated areas will be targeted in next Lebanon invasion and pre predicts a new Lebanon invasion after collapse of Syria. He basically promised bloody attacks on dense populated areas, adding that the damage will be enormous. Remember this article as well. Israel forces attack target in South Lebanon. And this is from July 2nd, so over a week ago. Lebanon bolsters army presence at Syrian border. This is from July 10th. Yes, we have started to reinforce our troops, and the operations will take us a week to 10 days to complete. So, pretty uh, straightforward. U.S. uses local militias in Afghanistan echoing Iraq's strategy. They're asking, will it work? Well, what do you think? And just like Iraq, they're saying it's a litmus test for NATO's exit strategy. So, let's see if they're getting out. If they're exiting, getting out of Afghanistan will cost us billions. We might as well just stay and spend billions, right? Thanks to geography, it's an order of magnitude harder than Iraq. So... And, uh, you know, you know they're leaving when what? Obama to ask. U.S. builds uh, basically another Pentagon in Afghanistan, a huge $92 million military headquarters in Afghanistan calling the new Pentagon. So just like Iraq, right? One of the biggest bases as well. And, hey, we helped uh, come and destroy your uh, country after you're just reeling from fighting the Russians. And, yeah, here we're going to pay you off with $16 billion. And their neighbors, Pakistan, their ambassador says, government never okayed U.S. drone strikes. They said reopening the border routes for NATO and that, not an endorsement of drones. And then, of course, they 
They struck them as soon as they opened the border and killed some people. The CIA drone strike killed six civilians in Somalia. It says here the International Criminal Court gives Congolese warlord 14 year sentence for using child soldiers. Someone's comments said it was set up for Africans and non Europeans. That's why war criminals like Tony Blair and Bush are still running free, while thousands of Congolese flee to Uganda. Thank you.